Good evening and welcome to the Gospel Truth. I'm Alan Jackson bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. First of all, giving thanks to God Almighty for blessing me with this another outpouring of his tender love and mercy and that he's allowed me once again to be on this the time side of life and to have this another blessed privilege to come to you in his name by way of this television medium and to bring to you another message from his holy and divine word. And as I always do, I'd like to continue to express my appreciation to the production staff for their continued service to the gospel truth. And it is my prayer that God will continue to bless each one of them with those things that he knows that they are standing in need of. And I'm praying on your behalf as participant observers. And it's my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family with all of those things that he knows that you're standing in need of as well. And then of course I'm encouraging you to pray on my behalf because I'm also standing in need of prayer and it's only God who can provide me with those things that I am standing in need of. And so of course we're going to continue in our normal mode of broadcasting. I do have my prayer list and I have a song. And so right now I also want to remind you that we do have a prayer list. We encourage you to write to us and to send to us the names of your friends, your relatives, and your loved ones to The Gospel Truth at P.O. Box 3944, Berkeley, California, 94703. Or you can call the prayer line at 510-848-8843. And there you can leave the names of your friends, your relatives, and your loved ones and we will add their names to the prayer list and I'll pray for them, encourage you to pray for them and everyone in the viewing audience to pray for them as well. And then also I want to let you know that we do have a channel on YouTube and you just go to the internet, bring up the YouTube, bring up the Gospel Truth with Alan Jackson and there you'll have access to all of our programs. And our cinematographer, Eddie, he also has a channel on YouTube. And you go to uh, YouTube once again and bring up Eddie Cam One. And there you will have access to all of his programs. And then if you want our programs, you just put in there the Gospel Truth. And then all the programs we have on his channel will also come up. All right? So right now what we're going to do is we're going to go into our prayer list. And then we will get into our song. So right now we are continue to pray on behalf of Annette Jeffrey, uh, Geraldine Keyes, Emma Jean Hayes, uh, Elizabeth Adams. We're also praying on behalf of Yvonne Davis, the Ahmad Aubrey family, uh, the Brianna Taylor family, Teresa Watson, Virginia Daniels. We're also praying on behalf of Deborah Price, Teresa Wanzo. We're also praying on behalf of Joe Brokaw, Brother Josie Pitts Sr. and family, Sheldon Horton. We're also praying on behalf of Nancy Lagarde, the Richard Brooks family. We're also praying on behalf of Shelley Lopez County and Cornelius County. We're also praying on behalf of the Jacob, that's Jacob Blake and family, the Daniel Prude family, Annie Riley and the Flowers family and the Gillum family. We're also praying on behalf of Perlene Jesse, Candace Powers, Terrence Bailey. We're also praying on behalf of Wilma Carpenter, Sherry Drumgu, Betty Williams of The Connection, and Bethany Williams. We're also praying on behalf of Vanita Coates, uh, Susan Gilmer and family, Dorothy Lofton, Brenda Williams, the George Floyd family, uh, Vincent Jones Jr., Ayanna Rowe. We're also praying on behalf of Commissar Phillips and family, Stacy Johnson, Dudley Sankey, Jesse Stevenson Jr. and Sylvester Stevenson Sr., Ursie Joyner, Curtis Porter, Chenhen Jim Pitch, Darnell Red. We're also praying on behalf of Ronald Gleaves, Pearlie Jones and family, Valerie Sankey, Jesse Stevenson, Missy Williams, Willis and Norma Ta Taylor, Teddy Lyles. We're also praying on behalf of Wilma and Harry Kellum, we're praying also on behalf of uh, Myra DeVore, Otis Phillips and Loretta. That's Otis Phillips Sr. and Loretta. We're also praying on behalf of Gary Gassaway, uh, Ralph Edward Stewart, 
Kendall Yarborough, Reggie Brown, Willemae Willard, Norvell Edmondson, we're also praying on behalf of Weldon Rucker, Louise Harris, Augustine Red, we're also praying on behalf of Damar Hamlin, uh, we're also praying on behalf of Eddie Lankford, Otis Phillips Jr., and we're praying on behalf of Gwen Hill, uh, we're also praying on behalf of, uh, let's see, uh, David Alexander, Sean Alexander, D'Angelo Gleaves, Patricia. We're also praying on behalf of Gerard Herndon, Lindsay Busby, uh, Jean Alexander, Robin M. Williams, Jerome Holloway. We're also praying on behalf of Maddie Lampkins, Dion Sanders, Aranda Morris, Shirley Burnell, Jermaine Minor. We're also praying on behalf of uh, Karen Cowens, Othery Christian, and Donald Drumgoole. And we're praying also on behalf of the bereaved uh, uh, James Bailey family with the loss of his wife, Eddie. And we're praying on behalf of uh, Eunice Busby and family with the loss of her mother, Eddie Bailey. So it's our prayer that God will comfort them during this time of their bereavement. So we're encouraging you to pray on behalf of those on the Gospel Truth prayer list. And if you don't remember their names, that's quite all right. God knows who they are. And if you would just be kind enough to utter in your prayers, those on the Gospel Truth prayer list, that will be sufficient. God knows who they are. And you will be blessed immensely as a result of you praying on behalf of people perhaps that you don't even know. All right, so now without any further remarks, we're going to be listening to Vision, and they're going to be singing for us tonight, All I Need. So without any further remarks, Vision. Lord, showing mercy, I hope I'm ready to go. First pair of wings out of here. I think it's time to overcome a big fear. No more rainy days, ain't trying to stay here, no. Going down, pray you hear me. I would have never known In the end he'll never win I know the way I live isn't perfect I'm thinking to myself Was it worth it? Ooh, my soul Ooh, it needs you, yeah Hey Ooh, my soul All I need in this crazy world crazy world all i need in this crazy world is that man who can change the world okay okay rain go away come again another day yeah Wipe away my tears Cast away all doubts and fears You should try him He will never fail Watch him, fight your battle Lord, the Lord, he will prevail Oh,
we'd like to express our appreciation, our gratitude to Vision for that fine song, All That I Need. So this evening, I'd like to invite your attention to the book of Revelation. Uh, that's the 14th chapter in the verses number 13. And the Bible reads thusly, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. From henceforth, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. So it is from this verse this evening that I am selecting for a subject, their works do follow them. Their works do follow them. And again, the writer, John the Revelator, he says, I heard a voice from heaven. Uh -huh. That's where it came from. And it said, say unto me, write. And these are the words that he wrote. Blessed are the dead. In other words, those that die in the Lord. This is what he says. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. All right. So hopefully everybody that dies will die in the Lord. But I know that's not the case. All right. But I hope that many of you will accept the message and the messages that you receive because all I am simply trying to do is set you on the right path so that you can hear Jesus say to you in the end, well done. All right, but you got work to do, and that's why we're dealing with this lesson tonight. Their works do follow them. He says, from henceforth, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Now, I want you to know that this lesson is designed specifically for Christians, because, see, if you're not a Christian, then the Lord's not looking for your work. But as a Christian, you need to know that you need to be busy in the vineyard working for the Lord because as the text says the lesson their works do follow them so when you lay down uh -huh, quit the busy walks of life folk are gonna be saying some things based on what you've done they'll be able to look and see what you've done if you've done nothing then they'll be able to see you didn't do anything alright so this is a lesson that we do need to learn and as we uh, understand we will hopefully do better and as a result there'll be others who will want to have a part in our work all right now keep this in mind there's nothing wrong with work in fact the bible says if a man doesn't work he shouldn't eat okay all right so we need to understand that the bible speaks of the works of the flesh it also speaks of the works of uh the spirit. In fact, let's go over here to uh, Galatians, if you will, the fifth chapter, and uh, let's see what Paul says here with regards to uh, this particular matter. This is Galatians, the fifth chapter, and beginning with verse number 21. And this is what the Bible says. This is Galatians 5, and the verse is number 21. And the Bible says, uh, let's see, that where I want to actually start with verse number 19. All right? Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, uh -huh, uh, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you uh, before as I have told you in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And then he goes on to talk about the spirit. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, against such there is no law. So if you are abiding and following the fruits of the Spirit, then you don't have a problem because there's nothing wrong with the things that I have just read to you regarding the Spirit. But now if you're involved with the works of the flesh, you need to check yourself because it's later than you think. You don't want to die in your sins because Jesus said if you die in your sins, where I am, there you cannot come. All right? So now there are works of Satan but there are also works of God too. Now, God never gives something for nothing. So we should work. And if you will, let's go over here now to the book of James. 
and uh, James spells it out for us over here in the book of James, the second chapter, and verses number 14 through 26. And let's hear these words. I think I need a little helper here. Uh, I'm growing older, and, you know, things change, so I got a little help, all right? So beginning with... Uh, uh, the, uh, let's see, that's James, the second chapter, beginning with verse number 14. The Bible reads, What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he has faith and has not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needed to the body. What does it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou, O vain man, that faith without works? Let's do that one again. But wilt thou know, uh -huh, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works and by faith and by works was faith made perfect and the scripture was fulfilled which said Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God you see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only Likewise, also, was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, uh -huh, so faith without works is dead also. So the message this evening, their works do follow them. So we need to keep in mind that the Lord is looking for works. Now, you can't just sit on the pew and think that you're going to make heaven your home. There's work that you have to do, and there's something that everybody can do, all right? And the Lord has given us abilities to do a variety of things, and this, we need to keep this in mind. And this is also over there in the book of Philippians, uh, the uh, second chapter, and that's going to be verse number 12. Philippians 12, uh, 2 and 12. This is what the Bible says. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. Now, he didn't say sit out. Uh huh. He says work out. So you have a responsibility to get busy so you can work out your own soul salvation. All right? So now, again, in this life, on this journey, uh, we must work out our soul salvation in fear and in trembling. And the Lord, he gives illustrations, if you will. We're going to go over to the book of Matthew. This is not going to be anything new to you, but I just want to illustrate how that the Lord has presented some things that uh, are necessary for us to see and understand. And if you go to the book of Matthew, the 25th chapter, and beginning with verse number 14, here you will find uh, this particular illustration. Now, in this parable, and like I said, this is over in Matthew, the 25th chapter, and beginning with uh, verse number 14, the Bible says, in, in this parable, Jesus, uh, he tells of the kingdom of heaven being as a man traveling into a far country. And, but before he left, he called his servants and he delivered unto them his goods. And I'm sure you're familiar with this uh, parable of the ten of the talents, but this is a brief uh, overview so that you can get the picture. Now the man, before he left, he called his servants and he gave them uh -huh, 
talents. He gave one five talents, and to another he gave two, and to another he gave one. Now, keeping in mind that these talents were given based on the individual's ability to handle what they had received. Now, the point is, you have received something, all right, and you need to get busy with whatever that is, a talent, a skill, ability, something that you can do, you can help somebody, all right? So keep in mind, their works do follow them, all right? So the one who gained, who was given the, the five talents, he got busy working and he gained five additional talents. And then the one that had gained the two talents, he got busy working and he gained another two talents. All right, but the one that he gave the one talent, uh huh, he went and digged the hole and buried it. All right, now I hope that you are not burying your ability and skills or whatever God has given to you in which you could be of a benefit to somebody. So, what we find is that after a period of time, the man returned and he reckoned with his servants. And the one that had received the five talents, he reported and said, you know what, you had given me five and I gained five more. So the man complimented him and said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou have been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. And then, the one that had received the two talents, he also reported and said, you had given me two talents and I gained two more. And again, he pleased his master. And he said, the master said to him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now I'm going to make you ruler over many. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. All right? And then the one that had received the one talent, well now, I told you, this is over in the book of Matthew, the 25th chapter. So what I want to do here is I want you to see how the one that received the one talent, keep in mind now, their works do follow them. So beginning with verse number 24, the Bible says, then he which had received uh, the one talent, let me, let me get my little helpers out here again, all right? He said, then the one which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, uh -huh, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and I went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I had not sowed, where I sowed not, and neither where I had strawed. Thou ought to therefore have put my money to the exchangers, and at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. In other words, you could have got some interest on what I gave you. Take therefore the talent that thou have, and give it to him which have the ten. So now he lost his, the Lord took it away from him took it away from him because he didn't do anything with what he had been given. So the word says, For unto every man that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance, but from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So we see that that's what happened to the one that didn't do anything with what God had given him, with the talent, with the man, the, uh, the, 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 when he went traveling, he had given his servants all that he had, or, you know, divided to them according to their ability. So we need to understand, Christians, you need to get busy working for the Lord, all right? Now think about it. Now, when these servants died, what would the people say? Well, keeping in mind the one that received the five talent, folk probably said, you know, he was a good servant and he worked and he gained five more talents and the Lord was pleased with him. Uh -huh, that's what you would think. They would say, oh yeah, brother so-and-so was a good man. He was a good servant. He worked diligently and, and developed what the Lord had given him. 
Now, are you developing what the Lord has given you? All right, so let's go on and see what it says. Now, the one that had the two talents, or the two-talent man, he also, this is what people are saying, oh, yeah, you know, John, he was good, too. And he went out, and the God had blessed him, and he had been given two talents, and he got busy working and gained two more talents, all right? And his master was pleased with him. And then, of course, we just finished reading. The one talent man was lazy and sorry uh, and didn't do anything with what the Lord had given him. That's what the folk are saying. Oh, yeah, you know, that was uh, Bill. Bill was sorry and lazy, and he didn't do anything. And you know what happened to him? He lost what he had. He had it was taken from him, and he didn't have, it, have that experience anymore. In fact, he was then cast into outer darkness. Yep. And while he was in outer darkness, he was out there, and he was experiencing the, 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 the weeping and the gnashing of teeth. Okay, so now I'm just trying to get you to understand that the Lord is looking for our works. If you're not doing anything, it's time to get busy. There's plenty of work to be done at various congregations. You need to do something. You can get on the phone and call the sick and visit them. You need to do something. There are food, food programs. Uh, people uh, need uh, volunteers to come and help fix the food bags and, and distribute the food to those who are, that's work, it's work to be done. So don't think you're going to just sit on your laurels and get to heaven. Keep in mind, the Lord doesn't give anything for nothing. So get busy and keep this in mind. It's later than you think. And we must uh -huh, work the work that the Lord has given us to be faithful to the Lord. That's our responsibility. Uh, James 1.25 says, But whoso looketh into uh, the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. And I'm going to give you one more verse from Revelation. Revelation 20 and the verse is number 12. And you can hear John the Revelator as he makes it known to you again. This is uh, Revelation 20 and the verse is number 12. And uh, this is something that you should keep in mind. 20, in the verse of number 12, he says, uh, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book were open, which were the book of, <laughs> which was open, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of these things which were written in the books according to their works. Come by faith, repentance, confession, and baptism, and you'll be added to the Lord's body, which is his church. And then if you live a faithful life, he will save you in the end. He's knocking at the door of your heart, says, open up and let me in. I'll come in and sup with you and you with me. I'm Alan Jackson, and I'm inviting you to join us again next week, if it's God's will, when the gospel truth will once again come your way, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. Until then, it's my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family and to keep you all safe.